I'm Ryan Durbin from RD Ceramics, and I'm located in Southgate, Kentucky. And I'm Becca Otis from Five Lines Pottery in Monroe, Washington. And welcome to Wheel Talk. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Wheel Talk podcast. Uh, this is Ryan here. Becca is not going to be joining us for this one. I um, wanted to try this one solo since uh, she was able to do one of these solo in the past. And uh, I got a good question on Instagram that I thought would be relevant to me specifically. And it would probably cater to a lot of the folks out there that are kind of in the same boat. So uh, just a quick recap of my day. So it's Wednesday. Um, I've got an Etsy restock coming up today. Uh, looking forward to getting some of these pots out. Um, you know, I've been using the Etsy shop kind of sparingly throughout the year. But I'm, I'm trying to get more into it and post more stuff on there specifically trying to focus on putting the right things on there that are have the best chance of selling to my online audience um you know i i post stuff daily on instagram and that's kind of given me the best feedback of what's most in demand what people like the most what are resonating the most with people the colors the the techniques and stuff like that so i've been trying to focus on doing a few restocks throughout the year i'm not stressing myself out too much um if you follow me you know that most of my show, most of my selling is through shows because I really like that part of it. That you know, that in person, that back and forth, the discussion, the storytelling kind of part of it. So um, yeah, the Etsy side's a little bit different than that, and there's you know, I completely have to rely on the traffic um, of myself driving traffic there to make the sales. So um, hoping this goes well, and uh, looking forward to getting those on the shop. I'm also kind of getting over a little bit of a cold from this past weekend. Um, we had a Christmas party in Louisville with my parents, and uh, we kind of planned that out. It's usually every December, the first Saturday in December, so we get together, and uh, the nephews were over as well, and one of them was a little sick. So I, I've, I've been fi fighting a cold a little bit the last uh, couple of days, so if I sound weird, that's why. Um, okay, so we'll jump in. Um, this question came on Instagram from... Fatima's Clay. So she is a small batch ceramic artist out of Los Angeles, California. And her question was, hey, I had a question for you. How do you balance a full-time job and a super successful ceramic business? I currently work full-time in tech as well, but I'm finding it so hard to work on my pots on the days I had work and come home at 7.30 p.m. I guess I wonder how you create your schedule for the best results and how do you manage stress of orders and work at the same time? Do you limit orders, don't give a date, and keep it flexible? So that was the question, and uh, I don't know if I'd consider my ceramics business super successful, but thanks for the, the compliment. Um, so we'll answer this in a few different ways. There, there are some commonalities here. Um, she works in tech. I work in tech. I I have the benefit of working from home, so um, I'm pretty much working from nine to five at home, you know, ten feet from my bedroom. So, so uh, it, there's some commonalities with the working in tech part, and I, I think the the best answer, like if I'm if I'm just looking at this high level, the best answer I would say is you have to prioritize. It's all about setting your priorities of what's most important, what you want to spend your time doing. If you know that your day is blocked out between, I don't know what time she starts work, but it looks like she gets done at 7.30 or she gets home at 7.30. Um, so let's just say she's working from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. So you can say that those hours are out. And also she didn't really say if she works only on certain days, but I would assume it's if it's in text, it's, it's probably a, a, a five day work week kind of thing. So yeah, I would say figure out the times that are off limits, you know, that you can't do anything. Um, I have a benefit here that I'm at home so I can physically like go downstairs and load a kiln or uh, fire a kiln or whatever while I'm home. Most people don't have that benefit cause you don't work from home, but you know, set aside the things that are most important to you. So obviously you got to work to make the bills. So the, your eight, let's say your eight to seven thirty or eight to five or whatever are off limits. You can't really do anything with that. Um, 
you know, I'm on my phone throughout the day, so it's not exactly that where it's completely off limits and I don't get on my phone or anything like that. So I am notorious for getting distracted and getting on Instagram throughout the day. So uh, that's a reality. But, you know, you can at least take care of some of that, maybe on your lunch break or something like that. Um, but uh, another part that I would say that's important to me is getting eight hours of sleep. So I pretty much block off that I'm going to be sleeping between, eh, it's probably, lately it's been less than eight hours. It's been like seven and a half or something. But, you know, let's say I usually wake up about 8.30 a.m. to work at 9. And that gives me, I need to be in bed by 12.30. I'm usually in bed between 12.30 and 1 a.m. every day. So, you know, those, that's something that I'm, I want to keep. I'm not working in the evenings longer than that. So let's see what times I have available throughout the week that don't fall in those hours. So my 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. are set. And my 12.30 p or a.m. to 8.30 a.m. are set. Those are off limit hours. So what can I be doing between 5 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. every day? So that's kind of what I have to work with. You know, that's a lot of time. That's, what is that, seven hours? So, I mean, you could get a lot done in seven hours. Seven hours for five days a week, you know, that, that stuff adds up. So I'm trying to do quick math, but <laughs> so uh, 30, 35 hours a week that you have outside of work that I personally have. Um, it's different for, for you if you're working later or whatever. So 35 hours a week that I have, I have a wife at home and I have two cats. So not really much else here that's depending on me to like make them dinner or stuff like that. Whether, you know, if you have kids or something like that. So, you know, that's the time I have to work with and I just have to prioritize. So my, you know, I do have a pottery class that I teach one day a week. So if I'm looking at my week on Sunday, one, one trick that you can do that I like to do recently is, um, I just take a three by five note card and I write out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if you know a note card, there's not much space to write on. So you're not you're not going to get super, super detailed with this, but I like to write my commitments for that week per day. So if it was a, you know, five day work week or whatever, I would say, you know, I'm not putting on there like my work hours because that's, that's obvious. So basically what I'm writing on here is any obligations that I have after five o'clock. So if it's during a a session for teaching, I would say Monday night is class. And I, I don't have to go super detailed with like hours. Like I don't have to say 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is class or whatever. You could do that if you want. But, um, you know, I would say Monday I have class. Tuesday, you know, maybe I don't have anything after work that day. And then, you know, Wednesday, maybe I'm recording a podcast with Becca and... I'll say podcast 5.30 or something like that because that's where we're going to start. And then, you know, Thursday, Friday, you know, you kind of see what hours you have available. Do you have anything dedicated there? You know, maybe I'm going out of town on Friday after work, so I need to write, you know, drive to Louisville or whatever. And I know that that's blocked off and I can't do anything those days. So you're just kind of filling in the blanks with what time you have available to do what you need to do. This keeps it kind of high level and it gives you in a mindset to either accomplish certain goals that week or maybe you use it just to block out what times are already dedicated to your schedule and then you can focus on what you want to focus on those those extra hours that are not already allocated. So, um, you know, I try to get in the studio Another benefit of mine is my wife works in the evenings, so she's a flight attendant and she works normally 
about 12 p.m. to let's say 11 p.m. on you know Monday, Wednesday, Thursday on a typical week. So I know that you know my Monday nights usually filled with class, and then Wednesday and Thursday nobody else is going to be at the house besides me. So that is totally unobstructed time that nobody is going to be distracting me at the house. The you know the cats might be around. But that's not a big deal. That's that's everyday stuff. So, um, it's up to me. It's totally on me to decide what I want to spend my time doing after hours. And I really enjoy getting in the studio. It's motivating to me to get in the studio and make a lot of stuff. If I haven't been in the studio in like a week or two weeks, or you know I'm trying to set a deadline or something that I want to get done, like I wanted to get this Etsy restock done. Um, kind of last week I was looking at, you know, how much time we have before the holidays and I was like, okay, I want to get an Etsy restock on the books before the, it gets too late. So I need to kind of push myself, say, okay, let's get an Etsy restock in before the end of this week. Saturday rolled around, you know, I've, I was at out of town or whatever. Sunday rolled around. I had a show and then I'm like, okay, I got to hit the ground hard on Sunday night or Monday, and what I did was I prepped a bunch of pots on Sunday to get myself ready for this week so that I can um, have pots ready. So, you know, I think I might have, uh, I think I wrote on my list for Monday for something that I needed to do. I put photograph items for restock. So I put photographing on Monday. Tuesday I said add listings to Etsy. And... Um, Wednesday is the restock. So, you know, between there, I have some, you know, some documenting where I'm making stories about the restock and putting a post about it and, uh, that kind of stuff. So I still got to kind of advertise for it on my social. And then, you know, I, I'm kind of setting myself up to get small goals. I'm not listing out six and seven things for the week and then checking them off and then not getting to half of them try to set small goals. If you can look ahead for the whole week and just say, I'm going to get, um, two hours on the wheel. Maybe that's enough. It doesn't have to be even more detailed than that. Maybe that's enough to get you motivated to like, okay, I'm going to, I said I was going to do this. I can set aside two hours of my night to do this. Um, something also that I'll tell you about my, um, prioritization. So a lot of people have their own things that they want to focus on, you know, I, for me, I don't really care that much about something like exercising. That's something that I deprioritize myself that I probably shouldn't. So that's probably a negative to my health that I don't exercise. I probably haven't exercised in like six months or some, something like that. So, um, you know, that's something that I deprioritize because I, I don't enjoy doing it. I need it, it seems like a chore for me. So if that's a priority to you that you exercise to make, if it, if it fuels you and you get, um, energy from that, or it puts you in the good mindset for the day or something like that, you know, I don't, I'm not like an early riser, so I'm not going to get up at 7am and like work out. That's something that's, I, I know that I'm, I'm not a morning person, so I'm not doing that kind of thing. And then I realized that, if I prioritize pottery over exercise, then I'm not going to spend an hour after work at 5.30 to exercise. Because it's not really an hour. It's like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes if I realistically put in the the actual time it's going to take because you got the time to go to get dressed and uh, leave, go to the gym or wherever you're going. Let's say you're going to the gym. My gym's like five minutes away. Let's say I go five minutes to the gym, go exercise for an hour, come back, that takes another five minutes, so that's an hour and ten minutes, and then let's say I'm, um, I got a shower because I feel gross, like I'm not going to be working and doing other stuff or whatever, um, you know, that's an extra 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, and then I'm ready after, you know, an hour and a half, and then is my energy level to a point where I can work in the studio, or am I really hungry after doing that, so, um, you know, that's just something about me that 
I don't prioritize as high as other people do. Um, I mean, could it benefit my studio practice and like make me better long term in the studio? Probably. Um, but is it something that I prioritize really highly on myself nowadays? I don't. It's kind of a. I feel like it's either you prioritize like. Um, I don't. I don't know. I just. I just can't make as much stuff as I want to make if I'm dedicating let's say two and a half hours of my night to exercising and preparing a dinner and stuff like that. So the other thing I would say is I don't like prepare a lot of dinners myself when I'm at home. Like I'm perfectly content with coming up from the studio at 11 o'clock, fixing a bowl of soup and eating soup and crackers for like 15 minutes and then like getting ready for bed or whatever. So that's, those are a couple of things that you probably don't see that are probably a negative in my um you know uh habits and daily life that you don't see but that's kind of a reality of how I've prioritized my week and you know I don't like to cook so I'm not going to spend time doing something I don't like to do I'm going to take kind of the easy way to get something that gives me energy enough to fulfill my like hunger you know, maybe I'll snack after work for 30 minutes or something like that and uh, and get me to my next thing that I need to do. So if I need to be in the studio, I mean, it's got to hold me over through my five hours in the studio and hold me over through uh, until lunch the next day or something like that. So, you know, th those are kind of things that I've, I guess, sacrificed <laughs> to uh, be as productive as I am. And, I mean, it's probably to my detriment. I mean... Probably, you know, I can say I'm going to uh, improve that next year or something or, you know, finding ways to go out and take walks or something like that might be a way that I can get some enjoyment out of getting exercise or eating better, you know, making preparing meals with my wife or something once or twice a week might be worth, um, it might be worth making that more a, a priority when um, I'm in the house, you know, I'm in the, I'm at my house every day for most days of the week, except for on weekends, maybe. So, you know, I'm trying to optimize what I can do with the time I have. And that's kind of how I approach it. You know, all these minutes add up to, um, the time that I can dedicate and if you're also, if you like working in a community studio, I mean, it takes time to go to and from that studio. It takes time to be in traffic. It takes time to like, um, I don't know, like every little thing adds up time. Like you got to get bundled up to go out to look presentable, to go to the studio or whatever, or, you know, all that time adds up. I, I cut out a lot of that stuff because I'm all at home. I just got to walk down to the basement. So, um, I don't know. That's how I would say I balance it. I just have to set aside what is most important to me and what do I want to spend my time doing. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're like, well, I need to watch Netflix or something to unwind a little bit or to chill out because I'm around people all the time or something like that. I'm around people all day and I just want to chill out. I don't want to feel like I'm doing work if I'm in the studio or something. I mean, maybe you can listen to a podcast and work in the studio or just give yourself an hour to work on something. Even if you don't, you can't finish something in an hour, maybe an hour is just enough to get you a little bit closer to finishing something. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's good. Maybe you need to start using some damn boxes in your studio so you can hold over the pots that you're working with. You know, make a quick quick damp box or two. It'll take you uh, maybe 30 minutes of effort to, uh, not including the time you got to go get the materials. So let's say an hour of effort to get the materials, read the directions, and prepare uh, plaster for a damp box or something like that. You know, it might be worth that hour of effort that you would have been spending in the studio. Maybe that pushes your your studio um, productivity that much more that you can 
um, produce more and your pieces. I also think of it this way. If I have pieces in a damp box, that's something that's depending on my time. It's kind of like if you have a, like I have cats that depend on me or whatever to feed them. So I have these things there depending on my time and effort and attention. I mean, you could think of pots the same way. <laughs> I mean, they're just sitting there, but they're sitting there in a damp box. They need your attention to get them to a completed state. So maybe just having something that's in progress already will give you that motivation to get in there and finish something. And it'll give you a quick win and feeling of accomplishment when you're, you know, feeling like, oh, I'm starting over as I go into the studio. I got to start throwing brand new pots. And that's kind of a hurdle to get me, uh, get me going. So I'm just looking back at the question again real quick, just to make sure I answered a good amount of it. Um, she also asked about how do you manage stress of orders and work at the same time? So most of my selling is on, um, at in-person shows. So I don't really have a whole bunch of orders waiting for me and I don't really accept custom orders. I have a couple here and there, but I try to give myself enough, uh, lead time. I mean, I'll, I'm realistic with people. If they're like asking for a custom order or whatever, and I'll be like, you know, I do this on the side. It's a, it's a passion, but it's a, it's a side business. I still work a uh, nine to five and I'll just give myself double the time that I think. So you know, somebody wants something specific, I might, like I had a, a custom order that was asked of me back in uh, September, maybe, September, uh, eh, probably October, and uh, they were asking for it, it was kind of a Halloween themed cauldron mug, and they wanted two of them, it was a form that I don't normally make, it was kind of an alteration addition to a piece that I, that I currently make, and I gave them a, a lead time, I was like, I can have them to you, uh, probably, early to mid, uh, November. And they, they lived in the city where my family's from. So I was going to see them. I was going to see my family for Thanksgiving. So I, I kind of gave them a deadline of Thanksgiving. So that gave me like six weeks, probably more than that. Probably. Yeah, probably six weeks to get this thing done. So I was realistic, be realistic with your expectations. I think a customer is totally going to understand if you give them a longer lead time and you deliver it on time versus giving them a shorter lead time and under under delivering because you push it back and say, I can't make it, I'm late. I would say always give yourself more time than you expect just in case shit hits the fan or something happens. And also like make more pieces than you expect. Like he wanted two mugs and I made six. So keep that in mind too. Give yourself more lead time. Especially if you're doing this on the side because other things can come up and, you know, losing an hour or two hours out of your studio. I mean, that could be a big chunk of the time that you require. You know, if you're only getting like five hours in the studio every week, if you chop out half of that, then you're losing a lot of productivity. So um, give yourself enough time. I think it makes a happy customer if you can deliver something on time when you promise it versus seeming like you can't keep up to what you've promised. Um, let's see. Do you limit orders? Or don't give a date. Yeah, I would, I would say totally give them enough time. And then the other thing that I, I might get is, uh, I might get requests through Instagram. Like somebody might reach out to me and say, Hey, is that available? Or is, is this possible? Or, uh, how much is this? So this might be the salesperson in me, but when you're, brought with a opportunity to sell something you need to like act fast in the moment if you put it off and say i'm gonna upload stuff to the etsy shop in two weeks and you reply with that i'll upload something you're probably not going to get that sale because they're kind of getting that itch and they really want it now so if you can sell something now that you have available then i would totally follow up and say yes i will send you photos of this piece or whatever and give you pricing it's this price i can accept check or i can accept payment through paypal or venmo at these two addresses um you know please send me your shipping address and i can give you a total with shipping and then it's on you once they once they reply with their shipping i mean you should go right into 
you know, United States Postal Service website, click and ship. You can type in their name, their address, the package weight and size, you know, you got to prepare that package really quickly. If you do it enough and you know it's a mug, you pretty much tell that, okay, it's this mug. I know I'm going to ship it in this box and it's going to weigh about this much because I, I've done it before and I know it weighs about a pound and six ounces or whatever. And you give them that total and say, okay, your total is forty-two fifty with shipping. You can pay me at this address or this address on uh, these platforms. And then all you got to do is wait for them. Well, one the also thing that you could do is um, tell them if I, I can get this out in the morning and it will be to your doorstep in two days. And that also gives them urgency that they're kind of getting immediate satisfaction that once they buy it, they know that it's going to be there in two days. I think that's also a, it might be a way to get that sale. So, um, that's something that I try, I try to follow up on every one of those requests, whether it's saying no and denying their request, or it's saying, yes, I have this available and you show them pictures and you give, the, you put effort into meeting them where they where they want to see you know what you have available and stuff like that so if you can do that then you're probably going to get close to getting that sale you know whether you and that also depends on like do you have the time and are you replying in ample time um i kind of have that benefit because i work from home i have my phone right there <laughs> so i can answer those kind of inquiries but um yeah maybe setting aside some time for you to pick up your phone at certain times of the day that you can um, get to those requests and you know the closer you are to answering those in the time of when they're asked the closer you are to getting that sale and then you know that's just another order that goes out the door and I really like the packing and shipping part so <laughs> so uh, preparing those packages and like getting them shipped out is really like fun for me so I don't really have stress of getting orders filled I sometimes have stress of getting um, consignment orders filled and stuff like that because there's a, you know, there's checks that'll come and then they'll have a note with them that says, I'd like to get this, uh, I'd like to get some more of these style pieces or whatever. And then you kind of put it on the, on the list to get done and uh, it kind of builds up and hopefully you can deliver it in time. But yeah, that's kind of, I guess that's how I would answer that. No, uh, this was a little more free form. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh yeah, thanks so much for listening. And we'll catch you on the next episode. I would love to get more questions like this. If y'all have anything, I mean, questions are always good because Becca and I can both give our perspective on it. If it's something specific like this and it's, you know, something I can provide as a, you know, folks out there with a full time job and a side hustle, then uh that's also great too. I'd love to answer any of that you can uh, contact either one of us if you want you could write us on instagram at wheel talk podcast and we can check those dms or you can reach out to myself at rd ceramics or becca at five lines pottery studio that's the number five all right thanks so much for listening and we'll catch you next time see you guys Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you want to follow me or Ryan, you can follow us on our Instagrams. My Instagram is Five Lines Pottery Studio. It's the number five. And his Instagram is at RD Ceramics. That's R as in Ryan, D as in Durban, Ceramics. And we would love for you to follow us, but we would also love it if you gave us a review on, on whichever platform that you're listening on and if you tell your friends. We really enjoy doing this and we hope that we can do it some more and have some great conversations. Thanks.